Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Mohamed Mouti. I'm Professor of Hematology at the Saint Antoine Hospital here in Paris. And uh, I'm here with my co-chair, Professor Arno Nagler from Tel HaShomer in Israel. Uh, and we're co-chairing together the second international uh, congress on controversies in multiple myeloma. And we would like to share with you uh, the uh, hot topics from today uh, during this very exciting congress. So Anand, thank you for joining me. And no specific question. What was your feeling about this day? I think that uh, we are lucky to be hematologists in this uh, great time, especially in myeloma, that I'm sure that when we were students, uh, we, it was uncurable disease. And uh, now it's a great time that we have a plethora of uh, new treatments, new drugs, uh, improving in the disease-free survival and overall survival, and uh, new monoclonal antibodies in way to treat a devastating disease that now the overall survival is reaching 10 years. And when we started, it was two and a half or three years. So I think it's a great time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm amazed like you. And also we didn't study at the same place, but I agree with you. We learned that survival was like 18 to 24 months. And it's amazing. We heard this afternoon that even in the elderly, myeloma population, you can have median survival up to five, six years. Really, really fantastic. So you mentioned all of these novel agents. So what are your thoughts? How are we going to optimize the use of these agents? We know we have phase three trials. They're all working quite well. The trials met the primary endpoint. Fine. Now, how are you going to take it into practice? So this is a very difficult question and just illustrate the options that we have now. I think that there is no one answer to this. I mean, on the one hand, uh, this multi-center transatlantic studies that are going on and some were represented the last year and some are were presented today, I think uh, they show uh, the way to go and the drugs that are, uh, have a potential. On the other hand, I believe that the fact that uh, every center or every national uh, group are doing a big difference, and th at the end of the day, we, had the we will have the puzzles, and I guess it will various places, various patients, subgroup of patients, including epidemiology, also budget, and tradition uh, will uh, let us you know different uh, nations and different centers to treat a bit differently with a flavor uh, the myeloma patients. Let me take it a little bit further because you have nicely mentioned that now we are speaking more and more about the global clinical trials. And I would personally call it United Nations Against Multiple Myeloma. It's really fantastic. So today we had a lot of discussions actually in different sessions about this transatlantic, you know, collaborative trials, the IFM 2009 DFCI trial uh, performed between the IFM cooperative group, but also the Dana-Farber. And actually, it's quite exciting to see the two different philosophies, the French, European in general, in favor of autotransplant frontline, and the American, I would say, philosophy, which is slightly more cautious because there's no difference in survival uh, even when you use these modern agents. So in your opinion, uh, if you have a patient tomorrow, let me give you a scenario, 64 years old, fit, uh, standard risk cytogenetics, so normal cytogenetics, normal beta-2 microglobulin, rather good one, what would be your treatment approach? So I think that uh, there are some consensus today in the treatment of myeloma. I mean, most people think that uh, three drug combinations are the way to do the induction therapy, so to hit the disease. Uh, 
There is a controversial if you need three induction courses or four. I think that the data till now show that uh, then you should proceed to autologous transplant. Of course, autologous transplant is a crude way. Of course, it's uh, not so friendly. Although the morbidity and mortality for the autologous transplant is low. Uh, but, of course, in the, near, in the future, we will b all be happy if we will not need this hammer and we can do, uh, you know, uh, some more elegant uh, therapy, immunotherapy, or uh, targeted therapy. And then, after the transplant, you need the consolidation for sure. So, using the same drugs, uh, and then the question on maintenance, most, paper, most people will agree that you need to treat after the consolidation and the question is for how long. And we heard a lot today about minimal residual disease, either by next uh, generation sequencing or by uh, multi-color fax, like seven or eight colors, or by PET-CT. But I think for right now, uh, you cannot uh, treat myeloma. I mean, in, at least in Europe, the data are the same also in the States, but the culture is different, and maybe the patient advocate is different, and the society is different. But I think all of the data till now shows that you need autologous transplant upfront in order to cure myeloma. All of us hope that in the future, uh, you will uh, can, can, we'll be able to cure myeloma without transplantation. I think I, I like the word cure because we hear more and more about myeloma as a chronic disease and I must confess it's true for many patients. It's a chronic uh, natural history of the disease and you jump on from one treatment to another and ideally we would love to see long treatment free interval durations. However, I think uh, we are agree both of us and I'm, th I'm sure many colleagues are on the same line that we may be able to cure a fraction of multiple myeloma patients actually at least the so-called standard risk if we put together like a full big treatment package all of these uh, novel treatments and I agree with you auto transplant is really a key component of this approach and I am not really worried about, you know, because toxicities have been mentioned. Obviously, it's bad time for the patient, you know. It's two, three weeks in hospital if you don't do it outpatient. Mucositis, we must admit, this can be very painful. Uh, digestive toxicity. But at the end of the day, I think... Uh, the benefit-risk ratio is probably in favor of transplant. Uh, but here, I would like to uh, get your opinion because we also heard today, and that was very exciting, we didn't see the exact data, but several speakers alluded to, this, to the results of this meta-analysis about maintenance therapy that will be presented soon and it looks like maintenance therapy can allow to achieve longer overall survival, not only PFS. So do you think we are going to give maintenance therapy to everybody once this meta-analysis is released? So this is a big question, and uh, I, we have another aspect for this, is the cost. So uh, uh, when we talk about these novel therapies, and, three, and triple drugs, and then adding monoclonal antibodies, and adding cellular therapy car cells, I mean, the price to the, will be very high, and not sure that the, everybody will ca can afford it. So uh, maintenance, I think that everybody should get. These are the data today. The question is for how long? Do you give it for uh, uh, some uh, defined period of time? or do you give it till progression? There is a, a various uh, philosophy in this. I believe that if we can give it to a defined uh, time period and not till progression, it will be better. 
actually uh, the really exciting area of being able to measure the myeloma, uh, the measure the mass of the disease with uh, uh, minimal residual disease techniques will help us a lot. And we can then, when a patient will be MRD negative, we can then dare to stop for some period the maintenance therapy and, uh, and see what, what happened. So, uh, but I think that giving therapy till, to, till myeloma progression will be difficult, both from the toxicity, secondary malignancies, side effects, uh, also psychologically, the patient will never believe that he is cure, and also from the budget point of view. I think you're, you're, you're right. We share this, the same concern. Obviously, I think m most people in the myeloma community, but in the cancer community in general, are worried about the cost of all of these novel drugs and how the insurances, the health systems, are going to cope with this. Uh, we agree on this. But on the other hand, uh, I would like to be a little bit more optimistic, assuming that, well, at some point, innovation may have a cost, and actually, we really need to rethink the way we look to the therapy, how we evaluate these innovation. And this is not actually, in my opinion, a matter of the cost of a pill or of a vial. Maybe we should look at the comprehensive treatment package. Maybe we should look at the a treatment combination gl more globally. Maybe we should look at a disease uh, stage uh, cost and so on. So I think we uh, agree on this. Nevertheless, uh, I believe that when it comes to maintain a therapy, it's not only the issue of lenalidomide, which has been the star of maintenance for obvious reasons. And actually, the safety is rather good, I must say. Uh, there are no major safety concerns. We are, everybody's aware of the risk of uh, second primary malignancies, but the numbers are relatively small compared to the risk of the disease. But I would like uh, to get your thought that Actually, now we are having oral proteasome inhibitors. We are having monoclonal antibodies. So I think the debate about maintenance therapy will go beyond the issue of uh, imids and uh, thalidomide or lenalidomide. What do you think? I know we don't have mature data, but what do you envision with proteasome inhibitors and monoclonal antibodies in terms of maintenance? So I think that this, both uh, the oral therapy and, uh, and from the practical point of view and the monoclonal antibody from the uh, scientific point of view will revol revolutionize the field and our also perspective for long-term therapy because, for instance, exosomib, you give one pill a week and patient need to come only one only once in a month to the be follow-up and not uh, twice a week right now. So I, I guess that this is an attractive drug. Uh, developments, although we don't have long-term follow-up, uh, but I would like to be optimistic and, and the, the, the data that we currently have are very, very optimistic. I mean, we can look on another disease that we envy for many years, lymphoma, and now uh, low-grade lymphoma, we are treating for uh, two years, three years, uh, a patient with low-grade lymphoma with rituximab, uh, just to maintain them and to cure them. This most probably will be the scenario also for myeloma, now that we have a couple of already approved monoclonal antibody and a couple more on the pipeline. So, maybe integrated oral therapy with monoclonal antibody. I think that the future is really uh, uh, promising for this devastating disease. Actually, I like it a lot because already in our discussion, we're using more and more the word cure, and this is really terrific. So let me push it further. Both of us are strong believers in the immune system. And I was personally today amazed with the level of information we got about the understanding of the status of the immune system 
and the mechanism of immune escape that are being now dissected in multiple myeloma. And of course, the corollary of all of this is that we will be able to design approaches to restore the immune system. So it looks like a very new era, this era of immune therapy, immune oncology. So what's your feedback about what we saw very immature, I would say, data about the use of these checkpoint inhibitors, but I was quite excited about the results. So I, I just have to join you. I think, uh, you know, by education, we start with uh, allogeneic transplantation, which yeah. is uh, actually, we used to say this is the only immune therapy that work. But this time again, uh, the immunotherapy is really uh, doing a, a great time in, in melanoma, in lung cancer, in solid tumor, and now also in hematology. So the simple thing is monoclonal antibodies, but cellular therapy are, are coming into the arena, and also checkpoint inhibitors. So we start to understand more, and after, I guess, 20 to 30 years, there was stagnation in immunotherapy, and no really breakthrough. Now, it looks like with the, with the checkpoint inhibitors, as we hear today, uh, patients are really that are on the fourth or fifth line of therapy are really, we, we are here, is there is no cure after fifth, fifth line of therapy, but we prolong, prolong their life. So I think that this is really exciting a time for the immunotherapy, monoclonal antibody, checkpoint inhibitors, and uh, which will be all, it's not one, uh, one drug or one uh, mean of therapy, but this is all arsenal of therapies that now we have for, for myeloma. So we're reaching the end of our discussion. Can we agree that the best alliance to improve and maybe to cure myeloma patient would be that we use the best pharmacologic agents proteasome inhibitors, imids, monoclonal antibodies, whenever feasible, autotransplant, a key component, push it forward, consolidation, maintenance, trying to restore the immune functions to create sort of a long-term immune control of the disease with negative MRD, obviously, which can be a good guarantee. Shall we call it the Comi Paris Alliance for Cure? Absolutely. I mean. Thank you very much, Arno. I really appreciate it. Great. You.